Hey there. So you've shared some seriously fascinating stuff on Tokyo Story. Reviews, analyses, even notes on Zen philosophy. Pretty cool. We're diving deep today into what makes this film a masterpiece and why it still hits home for so many people decades later. It's more than just a classic, right? Right. It's about uncovering those uh, universally human experiences in the film and figuring out how Ozu's style, you know, how he directs, packs such an emotional punch. Definitely. So on the surface, Tokyo Story is about an aging couple. Shukichi and Tomi. Shukichi and Tomi, right. And they leave their quiet coastal town to visit their grown kids in, well bustling Tokyo, hoping to reconnect and all that, but, and you know this already, things don't exactly go as planned. It's interesting, isn't it, this, um... This deceptively simple premise that opens up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You picked up on this in your notes how it's not just a family drama, it's like a snapshot of Japan grappling with these huge changes after the war. Modernization, westernization. All these tensions bubbling under the surface. And you know, it's so brilliant. It's like those tensions haven't disappeared. If anything, yeah. they're more pronounced. Totally. And not just in Japan, but globally. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, think about how much family structures have changed even since this film came out in the 50s. Ozzy really tapped into something pretty timeless. He did, because it's like we're all living with that push and pull between generations, that desire for connection and the, well, sometimes harsh reality of how families evolve over time. Makes Tokyo's story incredibly relatable even today. And then, just when you think you've got a handle on where the story is going, Ozu throws in this gut punch. Tragedy on the journey home, Tomi, the mother, falls ill and passes away. And that's where the film shifts from a family drama into something much more profound, I think. It's that moment when they're forced to confront their grief, right? their regrets, the entire web of their relationship. It becomes about those things left unsaid, those missed connections, you know, and how we all cope with the fact that nothing stays the same. We've talked about how Tokyo Story tackles these big universal themes. Yeah. But what makes it truly special is how Ozu brings them to life. Right. It's his style, his eye for detail, like those pillow shots you highlighted in your note. Oh. They caught my eye, too. These seemingly random images yeah. of trains, clouds, laundry lines. Yeah, at first they feel kind of jarring. They do. It's like, what do these tranquil shots have to do with this intense family drama? Oh, and this is what's so fascinating. They're not just pretty pictures. Right. They're doing a lot of heavy lifting in terms of setting the mood, the tone. It's like he's giving us a moment to exhale. Exactly. To just sit with the emotional weight of what we've just witnessed. Yeah, it's subtle, but so effective. And speaking of Ozu's masterful framing. Oh, yeah. We have to talk about those tatami shots. Yes. You know, that low camera angle that makes you feel like... You're right there on the floor with the character. It's about intimacy, right? It just pulls you right into their world. Exactly. It's not about spectacle. It's about empathy. It's like Ozu's not just showing us a story. He's inviting us to experience it with them. Exactly. Alongside Ooh. the characters. Yeah. And he uses those tatami shots to devastating effect. Oh, absolutely. And a great example is that scene yeah. where Shikichi and Tomi are getting ready for bed at their son's place. Oh, right. It's cramped. They're clearly uncomfortable. Oh, wow. I can practically feel the awkwardness of that scene just from your description. And that low angle just amplifies their sense of being out of place, you know? Yeah. It sounds incredibly powerful. It's amazing how these subtle techniques like the pillow shots and the tatami angles, they actually end up making the film feel more real, you know? Yeah. Even though they're these uh, stylized choices that Ozu's making. Right. It's like... They create this space for genuine emotion to to land. They really do. What resonates most with you about Tokyo Story? What makes it you know linger in your mind? For me, it's how um, it's how Ozu holds up this mirror to our own lives and to you know those messy realities of family and aging and the passage of time. It's not always easy to watch, though, is it? Yeah. It pushes us to sit with those difficult feelings. It does. Loss, regret, that. Uh, acceptance that things change. Bittersweet acceptance. But then you're speaking of bittersweet acceptance, those connections you drew to Zen Buddhism in your notes are so on point. It's there, isn't it? It really is. There's this sense of finding beauty and impermanence, mm. you know, kind of woven throughout the film. Absolutely. And it's never more apparent than in those final scenes. Right. Especially that iconic shot of the clothesline. Oh, yeah. This simple everyday act, but framed in such a way that it takes on this really profound sense of melancholy, of acceptance. It's beautiful. It's like Ozu is saying life goes on even in the face of loss, you know? 
And there's a quiet beauty in that. It's not a neat resolution, is it? It's like an open door to contemplation. Yeah, and that's what makes this film so powerful because it stays with you long after the credits have rolled. Totally. It makes you think about your own life. It invites you to reflect on your own relationships and how you navigate those those currents of time and change. Exactly. And on that note, if you haven't seen Tokyo Story, we'll consider this deep dive your official nudge to check it out. Thanks for joining me on this journey. It's been a pleasure diving deep with you.